Yeah, yeah. So you'll have a chart for it, but you won't have a calculator, okay? So, and uh, many of them will be multiple choice, so that might help you too. Yes? Um, this review. We started this review. Okay, so I'm going to put my little chart up here. We're just going to go down the middle, or actually, we'll just kind of skip around. Okay, so number one, I have seven as the base on the left. I need 343 to be a base seven as well. Okay, look right here, 7 to the 3. Okay, so 7 squared is 49, 7 cubed is 343. So I'm going to pull that number from here, 7 to the 2x minus 1, 7 to the 3. Why would I do that? Very good. Okay, once I get a common base, bye bye 7s, 2x minus 3 is all that's left. Okay, remember, that's the goal. And from there, if I have 2x minus 1 equals 3, what's my next step? Add the 1 across, then 2x is 4. Divide by 2 on both sides, x is 2. Very good. Okay, let's look at number 3 right next, or number 2 right next to it. Okay, I have 3 to the x on the left, but I have a 1 third. Remember that when you have a fraction, it turns your exponent negative. Now, you might be thinking, 3 doesn't have an exponent. It has a 1. <laughs> so I'm going to make my 3 to the 1 a 3 to the negative 1. x minus 3 kind of hanging out behind it. So 1 over 3 is the same as 3 to the minus 1. And now I can cross those threes out. But what am I going to have to do with the negative 1? Distribute. Very good. So I'm going to have x over here equals negative 1x and then plus 3. Okay, I'm going to add that x across so that it can be with the other x on the other side. So plus 1x plus 1x. So 2x equals 3. And then divide by 2 on both sides. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it as 3 over 2. And then on your uh, test, it would probably leave it as a fraction, too, since you won't have a calculator. Um, okay, let's just go on to number 3. What if it starts off as a log? Loop. Yeah. So where does my loop start? Equals 625. Then I have to look up 625 as a fourth power. So as Amaya said, if I look at my 625 here, that's 5 to the 4. So if x to the 4 is 5 to the 4, then instead of having a common base, I have a common exponent, but I can cross them out just the same. So once my 4s are gone, what does x equal? Good. So I changed 625 to be 5 to the 4, and then they both had a 4, and I slashed it out. Okay? Um, all right, let's look at number, let's do number 5. Okay, where am I going to start if it's a log? Loop. 64 up to the 1 half equals, bring it back around, 2x. What is a 1 half power the same as? Square root. Remember that a one half is the same as a square root. So I'm going to make that a square root of 64. What's the square root of 64? 8. eight. And if 8 equals 2x, divide by 2 on both sides, then x equals 4. Make sense? Okay, go to number 6. I see a log. I'm going to loop it. Root 3 up to the 6 equals x. Root 3 to the 6 equals x. Okay, now if I can turn a 1 half into a square root, then I can turn a square root into a 1 half. I'm just going to do it backwards. So this is 3 to the half with the leftover 6. Well, what's half of 6 up there? So 3 to the 3 is x. Now, is my x an exponent a little number? No, then I want 3 to the 3 not to be a little number. Look in your chart. What's 3 to the 3 the same as? 
27. So x would be 27, yeah? Okay. All right, let's go down to number 8. Where am I going to start my loop? 4 to the 3 over 2. Back around equals x minus 1. Now, from here, you got to remember how to break these down. The bottom number is the root. The top number is the power. Okay, hopefully you can read that a little bit. It says power and then root. So when I break that up, this is how I'm going to write it. 4 to the power of 3 and then a square root. Okay, now, how are you getting 8? That's the right final answer, but what do I do first? Square root of 4. What's the square root of 4? 2. two. And then what's 2 cubed? 8. eight. And if 8 is x minus 1, then what's my last step to solve? Plus the 1 across x equals 9. So I'm going to put here, you're going to square root first. And that gives you 2 to the 3. And then you're going to do the power second. You can do it that way too. If you did 4 to the 3, you'd get 64. You can square root it second and you'd still get 8. Okay, so listen one more time. Okay, if I do 4 to the 3, if I decide to do the power first, you can. Okay, 4 to the 3 is 64. And then what's the square root of 64? 8. So it doesn't really matter which order you do it in. The reason I tell you all to do this square root first is, to me, it's easier to go smaller yeah. and then go bigger. Versus if you go bigger, if it's at like a thousand or something, you may not know. Okay. Um, all right, let's do number nine. Eight to the power of negative four-thirds. Eight to the power of negative four-thirds. Do you remember what to do? If it's a negative exponent, what's it turn it into? Fraction. So that's 1 over 8 to the 4 thirds. And then remember, the top number is the power, 4. The bottom number, thirds, is the type of root. So what am I going to do first? I'm going to do the cubic root first. Do you remember the cubic root of 8? 2. Okay, because remember, it's asking what number to the third is 8. I need 2 to the third. So I have a 2 left over, and then what's 2 to the 4th? Use your chart. 16. Okay, so one more time how we did that. The negative put my 8 on the bottom. The 4 was the power. The 3 was the type of root. Then from there, I take the cubic root of 8. That gives me a 2. Then I look on my chart. 2 to the 4th gives me a 16. Why is it on the bottom? Because there was a negative in the exponent. Okay? All right, next one. Let's look at number... Uh, let's do 10 and then 11. Okay, number 10. Okay, take a look. First thing I need to do is loop it. So I'd have x to the negative 3 equals 64. Then from there, I need to find 64 as a power of 3. So look on your chart. Okay, 64 is in the cubic row for which function? Or which number? 4. Good, I'll put it up here. Look, 64 is 4 to the 3. Now, is 64 also 2 to the 6? Yes. But I'm not going to be able to cross out if I pick that, so don't pick that. I need it to be a 3 so that I can cross out the 3s, right? So I'm going to write that as x to the negative 3 equals 4 to the 3. <coughs> now, problem. Okay, when I get to this step, are those 3's really matching each other? Then I can't cross them out, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to break this side up into x to the negative 1 times 3 and 4 to the 3. Now, can I cross the 3's out? Okay, or is negative 3 the same as negative 1 times 3? And then cross them out. <coughs> so my 3's are gone. And x to the negative 1 is the same as 1 over x equal to 4.
And then at that point, you have two options. You can flip both sides or you can cross multiply. Probably what you guys have seen usually in that case is cross multiply. So if I cross multiply, I'll have 4 times x equals 1 times 1, and then divide by 4. I do not think there is one of those on your test, but just so you have seen how to do it. I think there's no one point. I'll just say it's equal 4. Because I wanted to cancel out the 3, but since this side was a negative 3, I kind of just pulled the negative 1. I separated it because I can't cancel out the, or think about it like this. When I cancel out the 3s, the negative stays behind. And I can't just only leave a negative, so I have to leave a negative 1. Okay? All right, take a look at number 11. Loop it. What are we going to get? X to the 1 half. Bring it back around equals 6. What is 1 half the same as, though? Square root. And so if the square root of x equals 6, how am I going to solve? Square both sides. And when I square square root, they cross out. x equals 6 squared, which is 36. Good job. Okay, two more left like that. Take a look, look at number 12. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is take these numbers and move them up. So I have log x equals, that's log of 64 to the half, remember those can jump up, and then log of 27 to the third. Now, what can a half turn into, we said, you remember? Square root. What can a third turn into? Cube root. And then what is the square root of 64? 8. So I have log of x equals log of 8 minus. And then on the other side, do you remember the cubic root of 27? Okay, it's 3. Now let's talk about y. Do you all understand cubic roots? You should have gone over them in algebra 2. But you're just finding what number cubed gives you 27. So anything you have on here is the same backwards. So if t three, it, 3 cubed is 27, then the cubic root of 27 is 3. Okay? Then from there, I can't cancel out those logs until I have one on each side. So how can I combine these to be in the same log? Divide. divide. So I'd have log of x equals log of 8 divided by 3. And now that the logs match and there's one on each side, what can I do? Cross them out. And I get x equals 8 thirds. Okay, and then again, since you won't have a calculator for this part, you would just leave it like that. Okay? All right, next one. Take a look at number 13. First thing I notice, I have two logs and they are added. What do I do when I have a plus between my logs? Multiply. So I need to do x minus 4 multiplied by x plus 4. That's one of your specials, but if you don't recognize it, I'll times it out anyway. Uh, I will move the 2 here in a second. We can move it now if you want. That's fine. What is x times x? x squared. What is x times 4? Four? 4x. Four what's negative 4 times x? And what's negative 4 times 4? Now, why is it special? What happens in the middle? That makes it easier. Now it's just the x squared minus 16, so that's good. So I have here log little 4 of x squared minus 16 equals log little 4 of what's 3 squared when I move that up? 9. Now, my logs are on both sides. If I have one on each side, I can cancel them out. So, cancel out the log 4, cancel out the log 4. They match, they're gone. Gone, gone. Bye-bye. Now, why would I not do a loop? Because I have a log on each side. Right? You're only doing a loop if the log's only on one side. Okay, so that's gone. That's gone. What's left? X squared minus 16. 
Kx squared minus 16 equals 9. What would I do after that? K plus the 16 across. And if x squared is 25, then what's x? Square root both sides. Five. Now, technically, should be plus or minus 5. Okay, we haven't really covered this that much, but logs can't actually be negative. So if you leave the minus off, it actually doesn't matter for you. If you square rooted before, what do you mean? No, because think about the square root of 9 would have been 3. That would have been a 4. And if I add 4 to 3, I get 7. So you have to go in order. So add the 16, then square root. Okay, good. One more left on this page, number 14. Okay, what are my logs doing? Adding or subtracting? If they're added, what do I do with these guys? I need to multiply x times x minus 6. What am I going to get? So I have log 2, x squared minus 6x equals 4. Can I just cancel out logs off both sides? No, why not? They don't have, both have logs, right? I have to do a loop then. So 2 up to the 4 equals x squared minus 6x. 2 up to the 4 equals x squared minus 6x. Then I have my little chart. What would you say 2 to the 4 is? 16. This looks like a 24. That is a 2 up to the 4. I wrote it kind of weird. So just make sure you're okay with that. So 2 up to the 4 is 16. And then what on earth do we do? T chart. T chart. Okay. Why? Because it's an x squared and an x. I can't just add the 16 across, right? I have too many x's. So I'm going to bring my 16 over. 0 equals x squared minus 6x minus 16. And then I'm going to t-chart. Negative 16 at the top. What will multiply to 16 and subtract to 6? 2 times 8. And then when I apply my negative, I need the 6 to come out negative. So I'm going to put it on the 8. So I have x plus 2 and x minus 8. Now, if those are the signs in my parentheses, remember your answers are always the opposite. So if it's a x plus 2, what is x really equal? Negative 2. And if it's a x minus 8, then x would be positive 8. All right, flip the page. Okay, hardest part is almost done. Okay, number 15. This was covered while I was gone. If you didn't watch the video, you better watch now. Okay, I have 9 to the 3, log 9 of 5. Okay, I want to cancel out the 9 and the log 9. I cannot do that with this 3 here. Where can I move it? Up. So I have 9 log 9 of 5 to the 3. Everybody good with that? Then what happens when I 9 a log 9? What do they do? These go away. And what's the only thing left? 5 to the 3. Look at your chart. 5 to the 3 is 125. Okay, look at number 16 right next to it. Okay, I have a 49 and a log 7. Are those going to match each other? No, but what's 49 if I write it as a base 7? 7 squared. So if I put my chart up here, 49 is a 7 squared. So it's 7 squared log 7 of 4. And then what do I do with the 2? Move it up. So now I have 7 log 7 of 4 to the 2. And now that my 7 and my log 7 are next to each other, what can happen? Cross them out. What's the only thing left? Okay, 4 squared. And what's 4 squared? 16. Okay, one more left like that. Number 17. My 6 and my 6's match. I just got to make it into one log so they can cancel out with each other. So first thing I'm going to do is move these little exponents. So my 3 here can move up. My 2 here can move up. So I have 6 to the log 6 
of 2 to the 3. Do we remember what 2 to the 3 is in your chart? 8 plus log little 6. Oops, I put the wrong number here. That was a 6. Um, log little 6 of what's 3 squared? 9. Then what do I do if I have logs that are added? What do I do with their uh, arguments? Multiply. What's 8 times 9? Seventy-two, right? Okay, so once I get it down to one log up top, what can I do if it's a log six and a six? Cancel them out. So six log six go away. What's the only thing left? Seventy-two. Good job. Um, eighteen. Okay, what do I do with the square root? 3 to the 1 half, very good. 3 to the 1 half, 6x minus 10. Remember, a square root is the same as a 1 half power. Then on the other side, my 81 is the same as a what in the 3's column. Don't make it a 9, I need it to be a 3 so it matches. Okay, yep, look right here. See the 3 to the 4? But if it's a fraction, I have to make it 3 to the negative 4. Very good and then x minus 4. Any questions about that step? Why did it turn negative here? Because it was a fraction. In fractions you always use a negative exponent. Okay, then from there I can do what with my threes? Cross them out. Cross them out. And then up top I'm going to have to do a little bit of distributing. What is half of 6x? 3x. 3x. What is half of minus 10? Minus 5 equals other side. What's negative 4 times x? And what about times negative 4? Plus 16. Then I'm going to add my 4x across so that they're all next to each other. 7x plus 4x gives me, herbs. I said that wrong. You know what I mean. Yep, so 3 and 4 make 7. Then I'm going to add my 5 across. What's 16 plus 5? 21, and if 7x is 21, what's my last step? Divide, Divide by 7x is 3. Um, okay, last one. Like that, number 19. Look right next to it. What do I do if I want to change my base of 2 into a base of a half? You can just cross this one out. That's wrong. What do I do if I want to turn 2 into a half? Put a negative where? Do I put it in the front like it is here? No. Put it up top so it's got to be C. Yeah? So what if it was a 5 on top and I wanted to turn it into a 5th? I put a negative on it. What was it? It was a 7 and I want to turn it into a 7th. Put a negative up top. Yeah? Okay, last little step. This was also covered while I was out. Hopefully you watched the video. You just have to know how to sketch these graphs. Okay, so number 22, 3 to the x minus 2 plus 6. Which way are we shifting? Okay, negative 2 with x means to the right. What about the 6? Up 6. So my center point's going to be 2, 6 right here. If it is exponential, your asymptote should be horizontal, like that. So it would be y equals 6. And then remember, this is one of the only parent graphs that doesn't hit the center point. Where does it hit? Do you remember? One above. One above. And then remember, your graph is going to be asymptoting towards the line to the left and then up to the right. What is my domain if it goes to the left forever and ever and ever? Negative infinity, Negative infinity on this side. That side's going forward together, so I'm just going to put all real numbers. Could you also put negative infinity to infinity? Sure. Okay, mm -hmm. your range, can it go down forever? No, it, stops at six. it stops at 6. Does it ever get there that I can use a bracket? No, so I have to use a parenthesis. So remember, 6 is your lowest point, and then infinity is your highest point, always in that order. Okay, take a look at the one right next to it. 
Number 23, what is my center point going to be? Left 5, down 4, negative 5, negative 4. Put it on your graph, negative 5, negative 4. Okay, it's still an exponential growth, so my horizontal line is still flat across. For my asymptote, what would I put for my asymptote? Y equals what? Negative 4. It's just the y value of how low you put it. Now, normally my graph starts 1 above. Is it going to start 1 above for this one? No, because no, why? Okay, the negative in the front. I'm going to put a little note. Negative in front means that it is flipped. So instead of being 1 above, it's going to start 1 below, and then it's still going to be close on one side and then going away on the other side. So instead of being close and arching up, it's going to be close and arch down. What was your question, Fletcher? Do you know which way the graph It's either going to be here or it's going to be here. So no matter what, it's going to start from the left. The only way that it could be backwards from that is if the middle number was less than 1, and that's not going to happen on your test. But the difference is if it's a growth or a decay. What's my domain? What's my range? How low does it go? Got to do lowest first. Negative infinity, but then how high can it go? And then it gets capped off at negative 4. So remember, lowest first, highest second. Negative 4 is the highest that that graph can go. It cannot go past that. Okay, last one, number 24. Um, it's a log. Which way are we shifting it? Uh, two, right, two, right 2, up 6. So 2, 6. 2, 6 is, oops, here. Don't put that little bottom one. That was on X. Okay, which way does my asymptote go for a log? Okay, very good. Up and down. You can think about logs come from trees, and trees grow up and down. Okay, that's my log graph. Now, is it a y equals still? X equals 2. Mm -hmm. Okay, x equals 2, and then instead of stepping 1 above like I do on an exponential, I step 1 to the side. And then remember, your graph going down approaches the line, and then going up, it goes away from the line. So it'll be down and towards, up and away. Close. Okay, now, my domain, how far back to the left can he go? Two. Two. Because what am I looking for at domain? I'm looking for my x's, right? So this line is at x equals 2. I cannot cross it. So my domain is 2 to infinity. Now, what will my range be if that side's pointed down and that side's pointed up? All real numbers. Make sense? Okay, so everything on that first page, you should be able to do it. That I think you have two more left. Okay, but without a calculator. You will have a formula chart. We still have 10 minutes. Is there anything off the back page you want to go back and look at? You want to do the half-life one? Yes. Okay. 34, half-life. You will have the formulas for these as well. Okay, it says y equals ce to the kt. That's my formula. Starting equation, it says the half-life of a substance is 20 days. There are 8 grams in the sample. C is your starting amount. How much do I see at the beginning? 8 grams. That's my C value because it's the starting amount. So I would do Y equals 8E to the KT. Okay, then it says use the half-life to find K. Well, I need another point. How many days do I have to wait for it to cut in half? So 20 days, and if it cuts in half, how much will be left? Four. So remember, this is the time, and then this is the half that's left over. That's what a half-life is. So if I wait 20 days, I'll only have half left 
I'll have 4 left over. And then remember, I plug that into this guy and I solve for k. So 4 equals 8e to the k times 20. What do I do first? Divide by 8. Can't log until I get rid of that 8. So if I do 4 divided by 8, what do I get? 1 half or 0.5, either one. Then I have e to the 20k. Because remember, k times 20, 20k, same thing. Now how do I get rid of the, L, the e? Ln both sides. And remember, if it was a different base, like a 1.3, you would log 1.3 both sides. So I'm going to ln here. I'm going to ln here. ln and e cross out. 20k is left over. What do I do with ln.5? Calculator. 693. Okay. And then what do I do with the 20 to get rid of it? Divide. So k is going to be negative 0.693 divided by 20. Okay, I'll put my calculator up here. It's negative 0 0.0346, which is 0 0.34, or 35. So negative 0 0.035. <coughs> okay, last little question says, okay, well, use your equation. So my equation is 8e to the negative 0.035t. That's my equation, now that I plug it in. Okay, well, will there be 1.9 grams left? Where do I plug that in, as the T or the Y? Y, and I think on your test they give you a time. That's easier. Okay, but this one they gave you a Y. So you do 1.9 equals 8E to the negative 0.035T. As your answer? Oh, okay, I haven't done it yet. Okay, so let's see, what do I do first? Divide by 8. Same old thing, right? Okay, 1.9 divided by 8 gives me 0.2375, which is 0.238. E to the negative 0 0.035t. How do I get rid of the E? LN. LN and E cross out. Oops, you can't see it. Sorry. Okay, LN and E cross out. Then I have negative 0 0.035t equals the ln of 0.23, blah, blah, blah. I'm typing into the calculator. ln of 0.238 is negative 1.435. And then what do I do with my little decimal? Now, it's a good thing that we're dividing this negative by another negative because your time shouldn't be coming out negative, right? That wouldn't have made sense. So if I do negative 1.435 divided by negative 0 0.035, I get 41. Good job. Good job. Yes. So good. Got it. Six more minutes. Anything else we want to finish? Huh? Uh, that's the only one on there. Oh, off the back, sure. Um, the only one we have left is 38. You want to do it? Okay, now y'all look at the keyword for uh, 38. How long will it take the investment to double? If it's invested in an account earning 2.5%, compounded, compounded how? Continuously. Look at the top. Which equation am I going to use for continuously? The PERT one. Not the one with the ends in it. If it was compounded monthly, quarterly, I'd be using the bottom one. But if it says continuously, you're using that guy. So A equals PE to the R, oops, to the RT. Okay, how much is she starting with? 4,000 e to the power of, what's her interest rate? Okay, now if it's 2.5, i got to move that decimal twice. So 0 0.025. And then it says, how long will it take? I'm leaving this as a T. Well, if I want to know T, they better have told me A. What do I want the account to do? To double. 
So if she started with four thousand and I or, and I double that, I'd have how much? Eight thousand. Okay, but then your steps to solve are the same. What do I do? Divide by four thousand. Okay, just like we did on that other question. Eight thousand divided by four thousand is two. E to the point zero two five t. Then how do I get rid of the e? Ln both sides. Ln and E cross out. Ln of 2 is going to give me some decimal, 0 0.693. And then if that's equal to 0 0.025 T, then what's my last step? Divide. When you divide by a decimal, does it make the number bigger or smaller? It'll make it bigger. Yep, 27.72, which is about 28 days. Or actually not days, years, sorry. Good. All right. And then um, next week we're just reviewing for the semester exam. Um, would you like extra credit for bringing your progress reports back signed? Yes. Okay. Yes. Get it signed. Bring it back. Uh, maybe not a whole. Day. I'll do maybe like ten points. If it's going in the test category, it can't be a hundred points. Y'all's quizzes, all your reviews are quiz grades. You should have straight hundreds on those. Test grade then. You should make. I'll think about it. Yeah, so add the 4 across, and then 9 plus 4 will be what? Yeah, then divide by 3, and then ln. Because remember, to get rid of an E, you just ln both sides. Yes, so if it's a hundred, then you're going to go to two decimal places. Okay. And then if it's the thousandth, you'll go three numbers behind the decimal. And then this one at the back, you're always rounding it. So you'd look at the fourth number to know what that is, or look at the third number to know what that is. Yeah? They are D and C, right? Uh, yes. Yep. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, Margia, yesterday I forgot we actually did cover this equation. Do you remember it from Algebra 2? The rate is still like the percent. You turn it into a decimal, but the n is just how many times it's compounded. So let me just put this one up here and show you. So if I was doing this one, number 36. 